Amidst the backdrop over mass suspensions in Parliament and a growing controversy over the decision of a Trinamool Congress Member of Parliament to mimic the Vice President, comes another political development, the proposal of Malika Arjun Kharge as a Prime Ministerial contender. I'm Barkha Dat, you're with the Mojo Story. Today, as we look at the big political developments of the day, we'll be asking whether we are looking at a possible Kharge versus Modi contest in 2024. Mr. Kharge's name was proposed by two leaders at the India Alliance, Mamta Banerjee and Arvind Kejriwal. It is not yet clear what position the Congress party did or would take on such a proposal. Kharge himself was reticent, saying only, let us first win and then we can talk about these things. Other opposition leaders at the India Alliance meeting have confirmed to us that at the very least, there was conversation about Mr. Kharge being the convener of the India Alliance. A Prime Minister Modi versus Malika Ar Arjun Kharge battle could be interesting for all manners of reasons. Malika Arjun Kharge is a prominent Dalit leader, a 10-time MLA and a three-time member of parliament. He's also a polyglot who speaks multiple languages. But he is above 80 years of age and he did lose his election in 2019, the Lok Sabha election. To talk about the political messaging that has emerged from the proposal of his name, let's go across now to author and veteran journalist and columnist Sugata Srinivas Raju. Thank you so much, uh, Sugata. Always a pleasure. One always learns uh, so much from you. Uh, were you surprised to see uh, Malika Arjun Kharge's name now officially, not just speculatively, uh, but officially promoted as a possible prime ministerial contender uh, by both Mamta Banerjee and Arvind Kejriwal? And my second question is related. Does it set the cat among the pigeons, not so much for the BJP, but actually for the Congress party? Thank you, Barkha. Always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I was not surprised at all because in Karnataka, you know, I mean, uh, the followers of Kharge and, the, and people in the Congress party have been making this proposition that uh, Mr. Kharge is a potential prime ministerial candidate. So this thing did not come to me as a surprise. But what came to me as a surprise was that it was proposed in the manner that it was proposed yesterday. And it looked like a calculated mischief on the part of Mamta Banerjee and Arvind Kejriwal. You're using the word mischief. Why do you yes. use the word mischief? That is because, you know, it, 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 one, it sort of sends a very clear signal to Rahul Gandhi that he is not someone who's preferred. So that is uh, signal number one. The signal number two is it's also trying to checkmate Nitish Kumar, who has always been very keen to be the convener of the India bloc. In fact, if you remember, it was uh, he who took the initiative to call the very first meeting of the opposition bloc in Patna. And, you know, I mean, I know through sources that his name had been almost finalized as convener in the very first meeting. But it did not happen because there were uh, very strange uh, kind of hands which sort of blocked it. So so that was, so Mamta was also checkmating Nitish and she did not want Nitish's name to emerge in this meeting. Third, it was also trying to signal uh, Mayawati, trying to tell her that see, if you don't wake up, then Karge may sort of come in. And you know, the Uttar Pradesh landscape is so very important for 2024 because the largest number of seats are there. And then you also know the kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the vote cuts that can happen or the kind of disturbance that Mayawati's party can create in the Hindi heartland. See, there are states where she got 4% vote share or 5% vote share this time, you know, the December round of assembly elections. But that 5% is the consolidated vote share of her party. But if you look mm. at seats, she has damaged the Congress party in a lot number of, in say, 10, 20, 30 seats. And if that had not happened, probably the Congress, Congress would have sailed through or would have performed better. So it's a, it's a message to Mayawati as well by, uh, th through Mamta. So, 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 and so, so also saying... OBC, OBC yeah. it's also a signal to the OBCs and the upper castes. So she has actually played, she has done a great favor to 
the NDA alliance by propping up Dal, propping up Karge's name. And you and I know, Barka, that whosoever name comes first is also removed first from the list. <laughs> okay, so hang on. You've said a number of interesting things. I'll start with the last yeah. first. You yeah. are saying that instead of being some grand disruptive political idea, yeah. by mooting Mr. Kharge's name officially, and today she's confirmed it in public on camera, yes. you are saying she's done the NDA a favor because... Yes. This proposal is going to achieve the following things. It go, it's going to cause consternation within the Congress. It's a signal yes. to the Gandhis or Rahul Gandhi, we don't want you. It's right. going to it's going to create a flutter in the OBC leaders of the India Alliance. Nitish Kumar yes. Lalu Yadav are already reported to have uh, expressed uh, their disagreement. Some reports suggest they left the meeting early and so on. We don't have official confirmation of this. And three, uh, you're, you're basically saying it creates a, a certain amount of uh, confusion uh, in the OBC leaders, uh, uh, you know, at large. And now we don't know how Mayavati might respond. Right. Why do you, are you saying this is an intended favor to the NDA or an unintended one? What are you actually implying? It, it may, it may, it's sort of, you know, try, it's, it's a game of politics. You know, I mean, it may be intended or unintended, but clearly she does not want uh, somebody else to take over the convenership of the India bloc. And Mamta, as far as her 2024 game is concerned, I think she's pretty secure. She is going to be the single largest party in West Bengal, you know, in terms of uh, the number of seats that she may get there. And she is not dependent on anybody within the India bloc to support her. So, in fact, she has been resisting an alliance with the CPM. Although she, she said that, you know, in the larger interest, I may consider and all that. She is not dependent on anybody. She is a standalone kind of person there. And Mamta is a Banerjee, you know, I mean, she's an upper caste person and she's mm. taking a Dalit name and she's sort of gaining personal brownie points. But she also knows that the Dalit landscape in India is not a flat one. There is a stratification within the Dalits. And Karge in the last one year or one year and a few months that he has been president of the Congress party has done nothing to signal to the Dalit demography that he is there and he is not trying to shore up any support for himself or for the Congress party. If you just look at what has happened in the elections in the three states, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan and uh, Madhya Pradesh, the Dalit, the number of reserved Dalit seats was cornered by the BJP. You know, in, I mean, I, I, I think I have the numbers here. See, in Chhattisgarh, hmm. out of 10 seats, Barka, they got four and they were two last time. In Madhya Pradesh, they've got 26 out of 35 reserved seats. And last time they were only 18. And Rajasthan, they were, yeah. uh, I think, uh, 12 last time and they've become 22 out of 34. Yeah, so, I have the overall, I have the overall yeah. numbers. Let me help you out there. Actually, in, in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, the BJP's tally in reserved seats, the scheduled caste yes. seats, went up from 32, if I'm not wrong, yeah, 32 in 2018 to 57 yes. in 2023. Absolutely. Telangana yes. was a different story. Telangana yeah. was a different Telangana, story. Telangana, they were not where, in the contest. Yes. Where the Congress, if we can flip yes. the banner now, you will see the Congress numbers, where the Congress actually went from 2 to 14 in the SC seats. But right. what is important is this assumption that a Dalit PM candidate would be a game changer by itself, you are yes. saying doesn't necessarily hold true because actually Dalits, at least in the recent three Hindi heartland states, have voted in greater numbers for the BJP. Oh, that is absolutely right. And also the Dalit landscape is not a flat landscape. It is a stratified landscape. You know, I mean, there are Dalits and there are Dalits. If you come yeah. to Karnataka, the, the, uh, the Dalits, you know, I mean, the, 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 uh, uh, the subsection of the Dalits that Karge belongs to is uh, placed higher in the hierarchy of Dalits. And there are Madigas below. And then when uh, the Telangana campaign was happening, you saw Modi trying to create a separate quota for the Madigas. A similar kind of battle has been happening in Karnataka where the Congress uh, hopes to perform well. But from 2008 on, the largest, I mean, the most oppressed Dalits have gone with the BJP. And from 2008 on, it is Yadurapa who has controlled 
the madiga seats in karnataka so even in telangana they try to divide the dalits on 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 this basis but they are naturally divided because the reason is the karge community has usurped power for the last 50 years they have not shared power with their other dalit brethren and there is a lot of anger so when modi came about you know i mean making that argument in 2014 i think they got about 24% vote share dalit vote share across the country and 2019 it was a it was a jump of 10% bharka it was 34% dalit vote share that uh, the bjp cornered so mm. so where is karge in all this is my question karge let, has let me, not let, 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 let me ask you this you have said karge has not actually done anything to reassert himself as a yes. dalit leader and we'll come to that in a moment but are you saying that there are no positives let me try and argue for a brief moment from the other side a uh, 10 time mla three time member of parliament has been a stabilizing influence on the congress party and its warring factions can speak six to eight languages uh, is 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 a pretty unruffled uh, sort of political figure uh, is grassroots is self made his children may now be in politics but nobody can accuse him of having inherited power uh, he has all of those pluses one uh, that's one set of arguments the other set of arguments is nitish and lalu may be sulking in private the congress may be confused in private but can they really afford to say can anybody in the india alliance afford to say no we oppose this yeah i mean the last point first bharka uh, the fact that they are not able to stay, say it publicly because it's politically incorrect to say so is far more dangerous in politics because they'll work inside against the whole proposition so that mm. aside uh, there are a lot of positives you know i mean i completely concede a lot of points that you raised that karge is a very seasoned man he is a multilingual he is extremely well read you know is certainly a better choice than uh, you know I mean uh, shashi tarur we had argued this a year and a half ago all that because we are talking about this proposal is he a little bit choice than rahul gandhi yes certainly you know I mean because there is the symbolism of the oppressed yeah. community in his name and his community he belongs to that community there is a lot of symbolism but you know what has the congress done after it made him the president is the question it is not so much dalit uh, i mean karge's fault the congress did not build an emotional help karge build an emotional connect between himself and the community after he was put on the biggest chair in the congress party so the problem is that there is no emotional connect between karge and the dalit community so you can you may be a dalit leader see for 50 years in karnataka bharka uh, karge is is seen by the dalit movement itself as someone who is from the community but not for the community he has always enjoyed power for 50 years and you know if you are in power for such a long time you know sustained uh, periods uh, decades of power you become risk averse so it, karge has not done anything earth shaking when it comes to dalit mobilization or whatever the most interesting thing is barka in 2008 when he was the pradesh congress president and when they went to election they lost under him and most of the reserved seats were taken away by the bjp so as a dalit president when he led the congress party to elections in karnataka they lost so there are because he has never been able to build that emotional connect with the community but he has been a kind of representative of the community by the fact that he is so you're saying he's never you're, you're saying he's never really owned his caste identity in a way that he's been able to build emotional bridges with other uh, other sort of you know members of the of, of the same caste community now i want to play out for you shogata at this point yes. uh, as you know the controversy in parliament one is of course the wholesale suspensions that is taking yes. place of the opposition members of parliament that has been almost drowned out by the mimicry uh, of mr dhankar Uh, who's a who's a jot and i'm underlining his cast for a reason uh, uh, by kalyan banerji of the trinamool congress so first i'm going to play for you 
what Kalyan Banerjee said and what Jagdeep Dhankar said in response. And by contrast, then I'm going to play for you what Mr. Kharge said, because it's a very interesting study in contrast of how both sides are playing the caste identity. Uh, so first, let's take a look at this mimicry row that is, in fact, a sh you know, shouted out or ousted uh, the nearly 150 suspensions that have taken place of opposition leaders. Take a look at what started this latest controversy. मैंने कुछ देर पहले एक टीवी चैनल पर देखा है गिरावट की कोई हद नहीं है गिरावट की कोई हद नहीं है मैं तो यही कह सकता हूं सदबुद्धि आए कुछ तो सीमा होती होगी इमेजिन वोट मस्ट बी गोइंग थ्रू माई हार्ट वेन योर सीनियर लीडर वीडियोग्राफ्स अ मेंबर पार्लियामेंट मोकिंग द इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ चेयरमैन एज एन इंडिविजुअल टेक ऑन मी डोंट टेक ऑन माई बैकग्राउंड एज अ फार्मर डोंट टेक इट बैकग्राउंड एज अ कम्युनिटी मेंबर institution of chairman has been revised and that too by a political party that has gone for so long a member parliament senior one videographing of another member for what i had suffered i tell you on instagram mr chidambaram your party put a video which was withdrawn later on that was shame to me you used twitter official handle of the spokesperson to demean me insult me insult my background as a farmer insult my position as a jat insult my position as chairman sir these are two serious issues insult my position as a farmer as a chairman and as a jat jat community sugata have been mobilized or have spontaneously the, the bjp might argue uh, protested in you know the president now has backed mr dhankar the prime minister has called him uh, and so on now in contrast mr kharge uh, responds to all of this, right? And of course, the opposition is massively troubled by these mass suspensions. And I can see that, uh, you know, in an ideal world, that should be where the media focus is. But for the purpose of this conversation, I'm focusing on how they approach their caste. Mr. Dhankar is quick to embrace the OBC dimension here. Now, by contrast, this is what Mr. Kharge says. Take a look. <laughs> किसानों का अपमान हुआ अरे चेयरमैन दूसरों को प्रोटेक्शन देना चाहिए अगर चेयरमैन साहब ही ऐसा बोले तो मैं एक अपोजिशन लीडर हो के ऐसे मैं ये कहूँ कि मुझे राज्यसभा में बोलने नहीं दिया क्योंकि मैं एक दलित लीडर हूँ ऐसी जात पात की बात अंदर करके लोगों को बाहर भड़काने का काम कोई नहीं करना चाहिए और मुझे बहुत बुरा लगा कि हर आदमी अगर अपनी अपनी जाति के लिए किसी विषय पे अगर बोलते हैं तो मेरे जाति को इफेक्ट हुआ तो मेरे जाति को तो हमेशा इफेक्ट होता है मुझे तो बोलने नहीं दिया जाता है मैं जो सवाल उठाता हूँ उसको उत्तर नहीं मिलता और आज देखिए हम जो कोई बोलने के लिए थे कि चिदम्बरम साहब थे हमारे शिवा थे और करीम साहब थे वाइको साहब थे सभी थे टीएमसी सभी थे वो बात करने के लिए तो उठे तो जितने मेंबर्स उनके हैं राज्यसभा के वो पूरे उठ के खड़े हो गए स्लोगन शाउटिंग स्लोगन शाउटिंग ये कहीं है रूलिंग पार्टी खुद दस लोगों के लिए अगर 200 लोग खड़े होते हैं तो ये एक मजाक है डेमोक्रेसी का यू नो द इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग इज शुगता दैट जगदीप धनकर लिंक्स इट 
links it to uh, his caste automatically. And yes, he links it to his caste. That's what I said. He links it to his caste automatically. He embraces his identity as a jat. Mr. Khargi says, imagine now if I were to start linking the fact that I couldn't speak to my being a Dalit. It, it's a complete study in contrast. So, Gata. Uh, Barka, I mean, first of all, Mr. Kharge was not mimicked. And it's a very unfortunate incident. You know, I mean, protest should carry a certain dignity. You know, the, I mean, the, just imagine when these uh, videos started circulate, circulating in rural hinterland and, you know, I mean, on, on smartphones and the kind of reaction it would have. So yesterday, you know, I mean, the, first of all, these people, what, what the, uh, the protesters, the opposition protesters did was not correct. They could have moved on. They could have sort of simply say, used a, there's a beautiful bisyllabic word in English. They could have just said sorry and moved on, you know, mm. because it was a constitutional role and constitutional position. And Mr. Uh, to be fair to Mr. Dhankar, he was reacting to the mimicry that had happened and he had watched it. And he just not invokes his caste. His caste comes last. He speaks of a larger, uh, you know, I mean, uh, identity of a farmer. He speaks... Yeah. See, he's he's been popoized, right? You know, I mean, what what the BJP has been doing to the Rahul Gandhi, uh, constitutional uh, someone who holds a constitutional position like Mr. Dankar has been popoized through the social media, and that's the game of the BJP, which is which is which is a past master doing something like that. So you Congress picked something and tried to do it, and on day one, I think it was on the December seventh after the session started. At the very beginning, he did say that I saw a video where my way of, you know, I mean, doing namaskar to somebody had been ridiculed. It had hurt me a great deal. At that point, he had not spoken of him being a Dalit. Oh, sorry, Jat. Uh, or a, a farmer. Jat. Yeah, yes. Jat or a farmer. He said, I was personally very, very hurt. That is how I am. I am quite a tall person. Yeah. I do bend and I do respect people and all that. And even here, he said, Sadbuddhi Mile. You know, I mean, he said, I hope this person learns uh, something out of this. And then I think he got a little emotional. But Kharge's reaction is a reaction to that. So now, after 24 hours had passed and the whole video had become viral, they came up with a strategy that Kharge should actually use his caste. So now Kharge's caste being deployed there as against the Jha thing is going to sort of... Also because things. he's... He's not really using it. He's saying, I could have said, I could Absolutely. have said, yes. I don't yeah. say. Yeah. Right? So it's a it's a clever argument that you're making. And the moment, you see, there has never been an occasion where he has been, uh, I mean, say, abused or, you know, I mean, denied opportunity because he was a Dalit. In fact, you know, I mean, uh, if you look at parliamentary proceedings, I mean, he's quite respectfully engaged. And Karge himself is a very combative and a very capable parliamentarian. So right. I don't think he has ha ever had a problem when it comes to speaking or. So you believe you what? believe the opposition made a strategic error by allowing the headline to change here in a way. Yes, because you know when they were callous, they should not have congregated there, behaved like a bunch of college students sitting in a cafeteria and cracking jokes. They were basically mm -hmm. doing that, and Rahul Gandhi had no business standing there and. Filming the whole thing. See, we, you may now say, oh, Modi also mimicked somebody. They also did this. We also. So if they also did that and you are also doing that, then I would rather vote for them because they're already, you know, so very uh, powerful and have spread, the, spread their wings. So you're saying, you're, saying, you're saying the Modi videos that have been found, Prime Minister Modi's earlier videos that the opposition has released today to say that, look, th there is hypocrisy in the BJP argument. You're saying right. that isn't helping the opposition today, uh, according to you. Yes, and more yes, on yes, that yes. in just a moment. More on that in just a moment because Rahul Gandhi reacted. He blamed the media for not focusing on the real story, which is the mass suspensions. Take a look and I'll come back to you. Apman, Apman, who वहाँ पे एमपीज बैठे हुए थे मैंने उनका वीडियो लिया मेरा वीडियो मेरे फोन पे है मीडिया दिखा रहा है मीडिया कह रहा है मोदी जी कह रहे हैं किसी ने कुछ कहा ही नहीं है किसी ने कुछ नहीं कुछ नहीं वहाँ पे देखिए नहीं नहीं सुनिए देखिए वहाँ पे हमारे 150 एमपीज को बाहर फेंक दिया है ठीक है 
उसके बारे में मीडिया में कोई चर्चा नहीं हो रही है ठीक है उनको आपने पार्लियामेंट से बाहर उठा के फेंक दिया उसकी कोई चर्चा नहीं हो रही है अदानी जी पे कोई चर्चा नहीं हो रही है राफेल पे फ्रांस ने कहा है कि भैया इन्वेस्टिगेशन नहीं अलाउ हो रहा उस पर कोई चर्चा नहीं हो रही है बेरोजगारी पे कोई चर्चा नहीं हो रही है हमारे एमपी वहां पे दुखी हैं, बाहर बैठे हुए हैं उन पे आप चर्चा कर रहे हो मतलब थोड़ा थोड़े थोड़ा थोड़ा तो न्यूज दिखा दिया करो ना थोड़ा सा आपकी जिम्मेदारी बनती है अब आप टोटली मतलब एक लाइन पे चले गए तो क्या करें It's an old familiar argument, and in this context, there may be a point in the mimicry a bigger story than the mass suspension. So, Gita, no, I mean I I completely agree with you. It is not the major story. The major story is the suspension, and in fact, in my column in the Times that has been published today, I have clearly said that you know I mean there was victimhood shaping for the opposition when 140 of them or 142 of them had been suspended. and they had to work on that strategy as to how to take that thing to the people and how to sort of uh, exploit the fact that they had all been summarily dismissed thrown out of the parliament and all that so instead of you know focusing on strategy as to how to take it across you sort of sat there and you started doing this and you know very well see it's 10 years barka you know yeah. the methodology that is applied by the bjp they pick up a trivia from somewhere and they blow it up and you remember the famous incident when rahul gandhi went and hugged the prime minister and came back and winked so that had been made an issue so you know how the bjp operates so when you know how your enemy or your opposition operates you had the onus was on you to be far more careful look far more serious and you know make points that actually sort of would take the fight to the streets but you you were you know busy uh entertaining yourself there and entertaining yeah. how so this sort of you know bjp was waiting for an opportunity for the first 48 hours after the parliament breach thing or 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 72 hours they had no argument they were cornered home minister yeah. had not come to the parliament so everything was going in the favor of the uh, opposition they should have quickly put their my heads together and thought of a strategy which could amplify that make it real take it to the grassroots and make the last mile connect and convert it into oaths but they were not serious and they have themselves now given an opportunity to the bjp to sort of pick on something that is trivial you know the method of the bjp it's 10 yeah. years if you don't know your enemy then how are you going to sort of come back to power and improve your numbers Yeah, let's come It back. Angers to angers you. Actually, it makes me very angry, Barka. I'm sorry about that. So, so in a way, you're saying the opposition itself uh, set the terms for the trivialization of the debate around the suspensions and indeed the security breach itself. Because who's talking yeah. about it anymore? Now, yes, let's sir. come back. Let's come back to Mr. Khadgi. You said he was a better party president, certainly than Shashi Tharoor. You you said that even when both of them were in the running. You today right. say that he would be a better prime ministerial contender than Rahul Gandhi. I'm just reconfirming that you believe that, right? Yes. Right. But you don't believe that in of himself he is a good right. candidate to take on Prime Minister Modi. Why is that? That is because he has not made an emotional commit with the Dalits of this country. See, has there been a kind of upsurge? in dalit support for the congress party after he has been made the president has there been an uptick in the support that the congress party has got from the dalit community in any of the hindi heartland states hmm. no so i mean so that is the primary question so okay you are you are better than somebody inside your party you're better than the other leaders in the alliance block that you have formed but are you good enough to take on modi and me the 34% is what i'm looking at barka uh, can you even bring it down to the 2014 level cut 10% dalit oath down to sort of score more than what you scored last time 
So, so let me ask you this, but who is the other significant Dalit leader? Because yes, the BSP, you did talk about its role as a vote cutter, which in the end advantages the BJP, but 4% vote is what the BSP garnered in the same states of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Mayavati in many ways has lost her standing as an influential uh, politically influential or electorally influential Dalit leader. So I think what you're suggesting is not just his, you know, uh, has Dalit politics been reimagined. The Dalit voter today is challenging the narrative, the old narrative of the BJP as the Brahminical party that it would ever vote, vote for. Absolutely. See, I mean, there's this recent book by Sudha Pai, which is which has analyzed the Uttar Pradesh Dalit landscape. And, you know, it's, it's, it's confirmed that, you know, I mean, Dalit politics has sort of, uh, is, is in a kind of crisis because Mayavati has sort of withdrawn and she has remained, she has become a vote cutter and is not very seriously into kind of, you know, grassroots whatever and for whatever reason, you know, I mean, we know what the reason could be possibly, but, you know, I mean, she's not taking enough interest in asserting and building and rebuilding her party. So, so Mayavati was the biggest leader and now Karge was made a president of the Congress party and notionally he's a Dalit. But then which which segment of the Dalit Dalits is he sort of connecting with? Is it the most oppressed Dalit, which he is not? Is it, there are is a stratification among Dalits? So is he connecting with But even Mayavati, even Mayavati connected also, with, the, yes. with the Jatavs, with the Jatavs, right? Yes. And not Yes. Not uh, all of the Dalit groups. Absolutely. So no, there is no OBC leader who connects with all of the OBCs. That's right. See, if you if you if you're able to get ten percent of the vote because you are such a tall leader, then that makes a difference, Barka. But I don't think Mr. Uh, Karge is in a position to sort of draw that ten percent or fifteen percent vote into the Congress Party because he's sitting in the most important uh, chair of the Congress Party. So, so let that me, is that is where the problem is. The problem let is. Let me ask you this. Not... Let me ask yes. you this. If not Mr. Kharge, then who? Because because the India Alliance can't possibly go into 2024 without a declared leader. If they do that, and they may, in, would that not be even more of an advantage to the NDA? No, but Mr. Kharge himself has said that let's first win and then we'll decide about the prime minister. So I think they're looking at a name only post poll because pre poll i don't think anybody will agree because nitish is very keen mamta is not keen on nitish then there, there was apparently a, a kind of a small uh, uh, you know i mean uh, debate between nitish and stalin on the hindi language thing that's so, right I mean, see you i mean as 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 journalist uh, journalist barka we have been observing that not a single positive headline has come out for the india alliance ever since they came together as an India alliance. So, I mean, but how are they going to turn around anything in the next four months? But, Sugata, in the meantime, as we speak, uh, you know, the, 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 the amendments to the criminal law, you know, have been passed in parliament. With, yes. with as I said, uh, I think now it's close to, what, 145 members of parliament of the opposition out, right? Yes. The, the op 143, I'm being told. Okay, I correct myself, 143. Uh, <laughs> The point is the opposition needs an out-of-box idea. It was suggested Absolutely. that Kharge might be that out-of-box idea. You're saying no. The yeah. point is laws are now being passed. The opposition is not there. People are not talking about, or at least the media in large part is not talking about the suspensions. It's talking about the mimicry. You're saying the opposition yeah. made a strategic error there. You're even suggesting that all this focus on Kharge could also be a strategic error, not an advantage. Yes. It cannot be an advantage because it signals a lot of things to a lot of people who are interested parties in the whole thing. And uh, see, the OBCs and the upper castes in the, in the Hindi heartland will not respond very kindly. And Modi is already there with a 34% Dalit vote share. So it's not going to be very easy. So, I mean, the Congress itself has done a lot of disservice to Mr. Karge ever since he has been made president. Just do a small analysis of their social media handle, their Twitter handle. Who has got maximum space there? Who gets projected as the leader there? It's, it's Rahul Gandhi. 
so kharge has been a very good manager as an as has been an organizational person he has at best played the role of the uh, general secretary organization to perfection but he has not actually asserted himself he has walked two paces behind rahul gandhi rahul gandhi has taken charge of the ideological uh, aspects of the congress party while it should have been kharge if you are talking you're... and rahul gandhi has confused the whole thing because uh, last point uh, barka see he has at one point spoken about constitutionalism then he started speaking about federalism he started speaking about hindutva light he started speaking about crony capitalism see he has moved on from one topic to another and if you mm. and he has behaved like a mandalite in the last two months and this mm. i believe has scared a lot of people in his own alliance uh, india alliance because the mandal parties came into existence at the expense of the congress party and if the congress starts speaking about caste then why will they want to give seats accommodate congress in the states that they are uh, very i want to pick strong. up I, i i want to pick up this last point about rahul gandhi behaving like a mandalite what is fascinating yeah. is one had the chance to meet mamta banerjee about two days ago she met a group of journalists and her comments are on record so i can quote her couple of us asked her about the caste census and she yeah. said i will not comment on it and we pushed and she said i will not comment on it then we met other leaders from the india alliance who were off record so i won't name them and they said this issue has lapsed this caste census there is no agreement on it so this issue that was hailed as the big game changer yes. it yeah. seems to have boomeranged that's very simple the logic is very simple look at the Uh, elements who are part of the india alliance the sp the rjd uh, then jdu all the mandal parties which actually will bring you numbers are people who form their parties at the expense of the congress and they control the pichde vote or the dalit vote or the Mus- or the minority vote in fact uh, samajwadi party's akhilesh yadav has spoken of pda no pichde dalit and alpasankhyat and that's exactly the formula that rahul gandhi is trying to snatch away from his alliance partners and make it that of the congress so if you are trying to do it so blatantly why will they accommodate you you are actually threatening their existence so they cannot come out and say that you know we don't want this agenda for to you for you to pursue this agenda leave it to us we will fight the bjp better with that and don't be Johnny come lately into the mandal issue so so, so you're saying that caste census hasn't worked as a unifying issue adani clearly hasn't and isn't ah, working adani they have an I have an interesting point there see even yeah. with the adani issue rahul gandhi wanted to become the face of this crony capitalism debate that he had been putting forward now suddenly mohwa moitra has been dismissed you know disqualified from parliament so automatically yeah. a lady an articulate person like mohwa Moitra has become the face of the crony capitalism argument charge against Modi. It's not exclusively that of Rahul Gandhi. So what is left for Rahul Gandhi? The Mandal debate is not Rahul Gandhi's. The crony capitalism debate is not Rahul Gandhi's. The federalism debate will now the 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 uh, DMK will never allow him to appropriate the federalism debate. So as a national party, what is the universal manifesto that he can present to the people of India? so he is a national party and he has nothing to offer which is pan india right, right? So, so, so that is a kind of contradiction you know I, mean, I, i i hear what you're saying so let's put it like this so if kharge was going to be the big unifying moment the googly bull to the other side you're saying it's actually mamta cutting nitish's patta creating confusion yeah. in the congress and uh, nitish, based... it's also to i mean it's 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 also trying to alert mayawati you know my right. can yeah a lot of things are happening there yeah so here's my question there was another googly not on record that is reported to have come from her a suggestion that priyanka gandhi should fight narendra modi in varanasi now you know our suspicion suspicion is very clear it's, i started this whole debate by saying it's a calculated mischief so will yeah. anybody suggest that uh, priyanka gandhi should fight modi in varanasi mm-hmm. she should actually be taking over if possible if possible Rai Bareilly, which Mrs. Gandhi may not contest this time, or she may be, she should be looking for a safe seat in Karnataka. Mm-hmm. You see, you can't make your debut. She has already made a 
uh, a colossal mistake by taking charge of Uttar Pradesh and ending up with 2% vote share Barka. Yeah. Assembly elections. So, you know, you can't push, end her career again. You know what I mean? You precipitated the end of her career again. But, but, but the argument by those who think this is a great idea, Mr. Kharge is a possible PM contender. One is, of course, the Dalit leader. Second is, of course, the veteran uh, experience. Third is the polyglot. Fourth is, uh, again, reinforcing caste identity that in, in UP, and they say you can't win the center if you don't win UP, 21-22% is Dalit. You're saying this is immaterial because Mr. Kharge has not managed to electorally boost his own identity as a caste leader. Absolutely. See, what have you done in the last one year and two months to forward, to communicate with the voter that here is a Dalit who after Jagjeevan Ram has the chance of becoming the Prime Minister? Has the Congress explicitly stated that is the question? Or has the Congress been promoting Rahul Gandhi every single day as a martyr, as this, as, as a kind of spiritual kind of quasi godman or whatever you know i mean they have been pushing rahul gandhi's image the communication of the congress i am not speaking about anybody else the congress itself has not taken pains to project kharge as the leader who should be taking on modi so where is the why would the others do it and and symbolism is one thing bharka but you know symbolism has to translate into oaths for which you have to have a ground level strategy a panna, panna promote kind of thing that the BJP does. The last pile has to sort of be charged up. Does the Congress have enough cadre in any of the North Indian states to do but that? But there's an assumption. To let, me, to the... let, me push you, let me push you back now. Just imagine hypo, yeah. hypothetically that Mr. Kharge is declared, not later yeah. but earlier, as the, as the face of the India bloc campaign. Yeah. Maybe one calculation, if one assumes for a moment that this was not mischief but an authentic idea, a genuine idea, one calculation is that the Prime Minister would find it difficult to target Mr. Kharge personally because just like when the Manishankar Iyer type of congressman referenced his Mr. Modi's antecedents and, and, and Priyanka Gandhi once used the word niche and Mr. Modi said, Meri, meri community ko thes poncha hai, meri insult hui hai. Maybe there's a calculation that if Prime Minister goes for Mr. Kharge personally, they will say, look, he's insulted a Dalit. So they, they, one is hearing these kind of arguments. I think Modi is a very seasoned politician, Barka. He, if you have looked at his track record of the la ever since Mr. Kharge has been the leader of opposition in Lok Sabha first and then Rajya Sabha, there has never been an uncivilized exchange between the two of them. Modi is too hardwired to make a mistake like that. So I don't mm. think so that 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 thing some that, that that I think we will have to give it to Modi that he will not do that. And even if he is made, if say Mr. Karge is declared as the prime ministerial face, then I think there will be greater polarization. You know, I mean, some pollsters are saying the BJP will cross 40% vote share this time from 37.4. I think it will become 44 or 45. So it becomes mm. easier. I mean, well, against against the backdrop and the, of the, and the culture and culturally and culturally, Dalits are with Modi as of now. Thirty four yeah. percent is with Modi, so it's not that everybody is going to shift, and Modi well, may start playing a, a completely different kind of pan caste pan class kind of uh, argument he may put forward, which Always which he's been trying to do, which he's been yeah. trying to do. If you look at the social know, engineering, yeah. If you look at the social engineering of the three uh, yeah, states, yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a tribal chief minister, an OBC chief minister, yeah. a Brahmin chief minister, and then their deputies, you can see that social engineering uh, project. But l l l let me ask you this. Where then in the end does this leave the opposition, right? Uh, if not a chehra, if not uh, an issue, uh, you mentioned cultural you know, uh, uh, cult you know on culturally also Dalits now looking to in many parts of North India to be aspirational. But against yeah. the backdrop of the reported jhagda between Nitish, the fight between Nitish Kumar and uh, and and the DMK over Hindi, over the use of Hindi, there yeah. has been a lot of debate. Right. Again, to the detriment of the of the opposition over the North vis-a-vis -vis South question. So, Mr. Yeah. Kharge is a Karnataka leader. Right. Yeah. Uh, he speaks impeccable Hindi among the several languages that he speaks. Do you believe that there is any north-south dimension to the debates of the politics of today? 
no actually that's that's something that that's a that's an advantage that karge does not have because he comes from the hyderabad karnataka region and mm. he uh, was academically you know i mean trained in urdu and hindi and all that so he's he's a kind of a bridge person so he's not typically south south so south in the mind of the north indian is a, either a tamilian or someone who's from kerala or someone who's an andhraite or someone mm. like a deva gowda who's from the old mysore region so mr karge does not exactly even you know can't position himself there trying to claim the south exclusively so mm-hmm. i mean in it's it's the burden is on the india alliance leaders to think what they need to do because they have bogies of arguments parka they don't have an engine of argument there's no engine to pull all those bogies together in 10 years they have not been able to create one big narrative Uh, which yeah. can actually see them through and they have not believed in whatever they have created it's been for a short space they have spoken about federalism then moved on to crony capitalism then moved on to mandal uh, politics then come back to something else then gone to the mahakal temple so it's a it's a see just imagine an ordinary otter messaging is always a very consistent thing the consistency is absent in the messaging of the india block leaders i know I'm, i'm speaking mostly of the congress the regional leaders have their own consistent messaging that's a separate thing so if they they seem to have failed and they seem to still carry this very self righteous argument that they are morally superior i don't know where that comes from so and that is what is playing out in the dankar versus whatever the elite versus non elite has been brought back it's not karge or karge's dalitism versus the jatism of dankar it's the elite non elite that is playing out and 90% of india will respond to that in a very so different way so you're saying it's so interesting because you're actually saying that the guys who are you know out there not even in parliament yes. who should have been in this story the victims yes are today looking like the entitled brats you are saying this i'm not yes yes, <laughs> yes. i'm very much saying it yes yes because their their arguments are constitutional arguments and modi knows and the rss knows and the bjp knows how much ever we may not like it the constitutional noise can be drowned with civilizational thunder that is what they will do and they create victimhood very easily like you mentioned you know the earlier yeah. election manishankar ayer calling him neech or chaiwala they know that is the, their past masters in that game so congress like it came very late to the social media game is also coming very late to the victim would gain so they have got uh, a post doctoral degree in that these mm-hmm. people are still at the undergraduate level so, so it's, it's, it's a, yeah. basically once again the opposition is fighting on terms set by the bjp instead They're of reacting. its own terms yes yeah they are coming and across and as liberal they have avoided actually. this controversy even yes. though neither of us is saying that this is some this is the main story the suspensions is the main story but you are saying by walking into this trap the suspensions has fallen off the headline to which rahul gandhi would blame the media to which you would say yes. what to which no, you would mean, say rahul what? gandhi rahul, see the whole uh, rahul gandhi has been blaming the media and you know they didn't want certain anchors to be sort of engaged with and all that that's a separate thing but see ever since the parliament uh, became a, a kind of live reality show from 2006 onwards whoever has been in the opposition has used the parliament for a certain kind of performance you know protest performance and the yeah. congress has also been trying to do that and congress should have changed the parliamentary game if you are so much a, a party that supports constitutionalism you should have changed the game i think they lost track of that They, they i mean yeah. now they walk you 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 said it perfectly that they walked into the trap that the bjp set and they were looking for some trivia i think a thousand cameras were being panned and thousand uh, you know foot of footage was being scanned to look for one little thing and they found it and now the whole thing is bust and it makes you very angry you yeah. know that that you've lost the opportunity such and a ruthlessness not, of politics yeah, i have absolutely. to i i have to end so with a one adva- one counsel to the uh, india alliance at this point you're clearly not impressed with the mr kharge uh, contendership anything else that strikes you as something that they could take to their fight against the bjp in 
<laughs> I really don't know, Barka, because you know, in uh, it's it's difficult to sort of imagine anything because uh, uh, they have been uh, completely, uh, you know, I mean, submerged by the kind of floods that the BJP has been sort of manufacturing. You know, and I really don't know. I really don't know because you know, it, it's it's a it's a work that had that should have started five years ago or six years That's ago. Right. But you can't suddenly, I mean, it's not an instant you know, noodles kind of a thing that you proper four months before the election and expect the electorate to vote for you. And then they start abusing the electorate for having voted for Modi. And then they start speaking about EVMs. You know, I mean, it's, it, they don't really know the reality because they're not going there. They're not going and, yeah. going and checking the pulse of people. You feel very yeah. sad because you're surrounded by uh, a, a lot of people who are day in and day out confirming all that we think that the BJP is. And the India Alliance yeah. partners well, and the a lot of people just not worried about it. And yeah, I, I, I think numbers can be the only wake up call. Everything else is opinion. The elections are now just a few months away. Uh, and, and those numbers will speak for themselves and decide the argument in the end. Thank you so much. It's been a fascinating conversation. Thank you, Barka, Thank you, Always a pleasure. Take Thank care. you for inviting me. Thank you, Marka. Thank you. Mojo's story has always made a commitment to its viewers to go to where the story is. And as you can see here, we are at the epicenter of the Israel war on Gaza. We are right at the front line, about one mile from the Gaza Strip, as the Israeli military gets ready with its tanks and its gunners to begin its final frontal assault that will take troops into Gaza. As we said, we are not like other organizations. We believe in giving you all sides of the story objectively and as much as possible from the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing here, covering the biggest global story today from the epicenter of the war zone. So please, we need your support. Support us, become a Mojo member, subscribe to us, spread the word and thank you for your support.